grazie no, mille. Next speaker, e adesso il prossimo oratore giovane professore di ingegneria meccanica alla Princeton uh, University ha appena stampato a 3D le cellule, quello che lui chiama il primo orecchio bionico. Ci ascoltate, si chiama Michael McAlpine. Buongiorno a tutti, grazie a tutti per avermi invitato e che sia per me essere qui per ascoltare queste presentazioni. Ci sono varie applicazioni e un'applicazione di cui non abbiamo parlato oggi che secondo me è molto importante è l'elettronica con stampa digitale l'elettronica fa delle cose incredibili stampano i loro strumenti per creare telefonine e questi sono i vantaggi della stampa ma anche per la stampa questo è importante non solo per l'elettronica ma anche per la biologia abbiamo visto varie applicazioni e questo tipo di stampa può essere utile. L'obiettivo del nostro gruppo in generale è di creare applicazioni bionic. Che cos'è la bionica? Quando sentite parlare di bionica, generalmente viene utilizzato questo aggettivo per i robot che si occupano di comportano sempre come umani, umanoidi, praticamente che possano agire e pensare come gli esseri umani. Però non facciamo questo, questo è un obiettivo interessante, in is the inverse, ma noi siamo interessati a materials uh, a and so this, it's actually a really difficult materials problem, which is how do you take a human and make them more like robots? And it sounds like science fiction, but in fact there are cyborgs among us. There's people who wear electronic devices on their body and that are actually interwoven throughout their, their body. So a good example is like the photo I have here is a cochlear implant, uh, which is used when people lose their hearing and they need the ability to uh, hear again so you have this implant installed another good example is a pacemaker which is an electronic device which is installed inside the body which, get, which uh, regulates the uh, heart beating for people who have heart arrhythmias so you have someone who has lost some sort of function like lost the ability to hear or lost the ability to have a normal heartbeat and you install this electronic device in order to restore this capability but what we're thinking is well if you could do that then you could actually take a, a normal healthy human and perhaps Perhaps install a device or augment the functionality of certain organs that can give them uh, augmented capabilities that the average human doesn't have. And uh, so we're really interested in this kind of intersection between humans and machines for regenerative applications, but also for uh, human augmentation and smart prosthetics. And this is a really difficult problem from uh, electronics and materials perspective because you look at something like your cell phone, for example, I have, happen to have mine here. There's The question is, why can't you take the cell phone and merge it with your body? There's actually three key reasons. The first is that your cell phone is hard, rigid, and brittle, whereas the biology is soft, flexible, stretchable. So the mechanics are completely different. Uh, second thing is that this phone is actually two-dimensional, whereas most biology is three-dimensional. So there's a, 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 a dimensionality mismatch there. And then the third thing is that uh, your, your phone, in order to get the high-quality electronics, it requires high temperatures to process, which are beyond what biology can sustain. So we're really interested in how do you overcome this discrepancy, take electronics and merge it with the biology. It's a really important problem from a material perspective, but also you can imagine the payoff in terms of bionic grandi vantaggi so, per l'applicazione bionica um, in, in this particular project e in questo progetto particolare is, we thought, well, maybe a 3D abbiamo uh, usato una stampante 3D per risolvere before. questo problema a 3D printer gives you the three dimensionality of if you can print electronics in three dimensions then suddenly you have something that's comparable to the three dimensions of biology uh, the 3D printing can print in ways that uh, can overcome this mechanical discrepancy so you can actually intertwine the electronics with the biology and have a system which is still soft, flexible, stretchable, but has electronics interwoven throughout it. And we use a 3D printer which prints at room temperature so the cells stay alive and we found a way to print electronics as well at room temperature so you overcome these temperature discrepancies as well. And the particular device that we made is what we call a bionic ear which is an ear which is real cartilage 
tissue that we printed that has electronics eh, interwoven in three dimensions throughout the ear. And so you can use the CAD design to create the ear. Uh, we, we had a basic 3D printer. We fed in the cells. We feed in the electronic materials. We feed in some other materials. Most 3D printers you know, print plastics. Uh, we saw an uh, interesting uh, application with food. But uh, in the scientific community, no one had shown that you could do cells and electronic materials as well and then do them at the same time together so everything is interwoven and, and intermixed in a single uh, construct. You can see the ear being printed here. So, uh, don't know what happened there, but uh, so after you print the ear, you can, uh, these are real cartilage cells which can be cultured into real cartilage tissue. So this is a real ear, but it's not just a piece of cartilage sitting on a table, it actually has functionality built into it because of this electronic component. This ear can actually hear. So it can hear a little bit differently than our ears can. We can hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and we receive uh, mechanical pressure waves that hit our ears, our hair cells vibrate, and that sends electrical signals to the brain, which is electronic organ. These ears can actually hear within that range, but also from the megahertz up to the gigahertz frequency. So that's what makes it bionic. You can hear beyond the normal range of human hearing. And we can actually see if we play this, uh, this video at the bottom. Uh, which has sound Adesso, uh, uh, vediamo se riusciamo uh, a vedere il video. We printed a left ear and a right ear, and the, these ears can actually destro, listen to Beethoven. So everything you're hearing here, the sound of Beethoven, is what these two Beethoven. ears, these uh, 3D Vedete, printed bionic ears, are listening uh, to. This is what they're actually picking up uh, through this electromagnetic transduction. So we think that this, gives, this shows that we can print an organ which extends the range of human capability into a new range and starts to create bionic organs, bionic humans, by this merger of electronics Umani, and biology together. Biologi, so thanks a lot.